Will DaVinci Resolve 17 work on Windows 11? Well, let's find out. So on October 5th, 2021, Windows 11 officially rolled out. Now there's definitely been some controversy because not every computer running Windows 10 will be able to upgrade to Windows 11. There are also some known performance issues if you're running an AMD system. Unfortunately, that's what I'm running. The good news is I really haven't noticed any performance issues except for when I was trying to upgrade DaVinci Resolve and OBS. For some reason, the executable file just took I don't know, too long to actually launch to the point where I thought my computer froze. But besides that, I'm really enjoying all the rounded corners, finally. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch DaVinci Resolve. Uh, one thing that I'm gonna point out about Windows 11 that I kinda don't like is I usually have Resolve pinned to my taskbar. And if you use Resolve, you know that every time you upgrade your version, your icon or your shortcut, becomes useless and you have to pen a new one. Uh, so a big complaint that I have is if I just right click, the only option is to pen to start and I want to pen to the taskbar. So to do this, you have to come over to show more options to expand the old Windows 10 menu, which just has a handful of more options. And here is pen to taskbar. And then, ta-da, here it is. This is kind of obnoxious in my opinion, and I hope they just add that to the original menu. That will be very nice. Ooh, look at these rounded corners. So exciting. Windows 11. Woo! Okay, so I'm just gonna start a new project and call this Windows 11 Test and Create. Awesome, for my media pool, I'm actually gonna grab some footage from a, a video that Lucas recorded and cool here we are so the first thing that I normally do is right click and do generate optimized media for a smoother performance and this usually takes a few minutes to generate so I'm not seeing any noticeable performance issues for my end now Awesome, so that was able to happen, no problem. So I'm also just gonna come in here and just create some bins. Um, I don't know, you could organize this however you typically do, but I'll just call this um, video uh, images, rename audio, and might as well bring in a song. So far, all these bends working just fine. Here in the cut, we could go ahead and pull this main video in. Um. Yeah, so everything seems to be working just fine here. Uh, I typically don't prefer to use this cut tab. I'm a edit workflow kind of guy. I like seeing this view. Uh, so I'm just gonna come in here, use the blade tool and just make some random cuts and you know, go ahead and close some of this stuff. And cool, so all this appears to be working just fine. I'm able to scrub nice and fast. And so that is cool. So next, let's go ahead and add in some extra layers. So I'm just gonna come in here to images and just drag this random image onto here and drag in audio and then throw in a sound clip and then even throw in some background music kind of throughout. probably seen one of these before. This is an MPK Mini, specifically the Mark II.
and it has a sustain pedal input. So if it does everything it needs to do, why change? Cool. So just from adding images, multiple layers of audio, everything is working fine. I'm not really seeing any performance issues. Um, so I'm just going to move along to some fusion effects. So to do this, um, I'm just going to take this beginning clip here. I'll keep this selected and then come to the fusion tab. Okay. So I'm going to add in some text. Then I'm gonna come in here, select media one, and search for a tracker. Now I'm just gonna outline Lucas's face. Pretty long clip. Normally I wouldn't track this much, but. Awesome, now I could create this transform. Now we got some fusion effects in here. I'll go ahead and save and let this load. All right. Cool, so we have that in place. Now let's add some color effects or some color correction. All right, so I'm not gonna do anything really special here. I'm just gonna make some random adjustments by eye. That looks okay. I'm not a color correction expert, so. Anywho. Cool, so now we have applied color correction on all of our clips. We could come in here to Fairlight. What I like about this MPK Mini Play in comparison to the uh, regular MPK Mini. And just to play around with some stuff, we could go ahead and click on here, click on, click on effects and, why not just add some reverb? And that is that it looks and feels exactly like an NBK Mini. And that's about it. Like I said, it's an MPK Mini. Cool, so now we even have some fair light sound effects in there. Everything seems to be working just fine. So I normally come in here and we'll call this test browse. We just dump it in this videos folder, frame rate 30. Yeah, cool, that's about it. Click add to render queue and render all. And it takes a few minutes to render. So I'm not seeing anything, you know, crazy happening and everything seems to be working just fine. Awesome, and let's make sure it output correctly. All right. Everything appears to be working just fine to me. Granted, I haven't really overloaded it and added, you know, 10 layers of video or images. So I haven't seen the known AMD performance issues while using DaVinci Resolve specifically. If you're a professional, well, you're probably gonna be waiting a few months before you upgrade anyways. And over time, hopefully Blackmagic Studios adds more support for Windows 11 specifically, which I, is just a matter of time, really. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.